Thanks everyone for, for joining us today. Uh, welcome to the uh, FINIT webinar series. Um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully those of you that are, that are joining, you, you realize I mean, we, we're actually doing a lot more of these this year. We've kind of changed our, not changed, but we've added to our, our focus. I mean, we've always been very product specific and trying to give our, our clients deep knowledge of, of the products we work with. But we've kind of added a layer this year where uh, we're getting more into you know strategy and and you know higher level uh, uh, type webinars. We you know we did a couple this year based on you know rolling forecasts, the the planning process, driver based planning that that kind of stuff. And today is going to be a, a, another step in in that way. So we're going to be doing uh, you know focus on uh, profitability today, but and then we'll also do a, a demo of the HPCM tool, which you know is built for for profitability. So, um, so it should be a, a really good one. Um, we also have a really great webinar coming up in two weeks. Uh, probably the number one thing I get asked about these days from clients is the cloud. Where is it going? What's the strategy? Uh, you know, how do I need to? Am I going to get forced off of my on-premise? Those those kind of things. So uh, Friday. May 13th, we sh we're looking to do a, a cloud uh, presentation. So it's not going to be, you know, focused just on like PBCS. It's going to be, um, you know, we'll talk about the product some, but it's going to be high level strategy. What's happening in, uh, you know, around the Oracle products, above, you know, and outside of that. So it should be a really good one. So stay tuned, tuned for that. So, okay, let me uh, let me just dig into our our intro, and then uh, and then we'll we'll get down to business. So. Uh, if you if you haven't uh, attended any of these before, you know here's kind of our, our proven and trusted track record: 250 clients, uh, 500 uh, plus projects. Okay, so why is Finit here? Uh, I mean, not here today, but why you know why does Finit exist in a, as a company? And it's really pretty simple. We really enjoy what we do. We we are problem solvers. We're we're people who who dig in into the, the details. And, and one of the things we're constantly asked about when we are talking to clients and prospects about projects is, is you know, talk to me about your best practices. And while there's, there's value in that, that's not necessarily where we go with things. We kind of think of as best practices as, as code or someone just trying to take a solution they did somewhere else and just slap it into an, uh, onto a, a project at another company. And that's that's not really who we are. We we believe in listening and working hand in hand with our clients to come up with the optimum solution. So obviously we learn from every client and every client is, is different, but we are we are not the, you know, apply a cookie cutter solution to, to every problem. So a little bit more about us, uh, you know, we call it the Finit family. We are 100% private, thankfully. Uh, there are six six owners. Uh, we're debt free. Um, we do not use subcontractors, so we do not win business and then apply subcontractors. You're, you're always working with full-time employees. And then our, uh, our methodology is that our people and our teams are uh, incented based on client satisfaction. So we try to align our teams directly with our, our clients. And, and we do that by on every project, when the project ends, we ask our clients to literally tell us how our our teams did, and that's how our our folks get bonus. Most other consulting companies, it's based on the number of hours charged. And the problem there is, if you tell someone if you bill a certain number of hours, you'll receive this bonus. They're probably going to figure out a way to bill those hours, whether it's to a benefit of the the client or or not. So, what we do is, you know, here are, here are our values as a company. We ask you to tell us how we did. And that's how our, our team's performance is, is graded. So it's, it's worked out great for us. It, it kind of makes sure that we're aligned to our clients' interests. And it, and it allows us to, it has allowed us to make this statement. We have 100% customer success since our inception in 2002. And probably what, <coughs> excuse me, what we're most proud of is that number in the bottom right. Uh, that, that means that we're getting asked back to do multiple projects at our, at our clients. So, it's a nice, nice track record to, to have. All right, uh, some of you, uh, hopefully, uh, watching today are on this this slide. Um, just some of our, our clients over the years. Okay, so uh, I mentioned 
and, and I don't even know if I introduced myself. My, my name is Greg Barrett. I'm one of the partners at, at Bennett. Um, so I'm just doing the, the introduction. I'm going to turn it over to Srinivas in a minute. Uh, Srinivas joined us from Oracle. As you can see, he's got a deep, deep level of experience around the planning and S-based pro, uh, products. Uh, he's also uh, you know, worked on PBCS and um, HPCM, which we're going to be talking about today. So Srinivas is going to take some of that knowledge from the, the HPCM uh, projects he's done. Um, and we'll go through some some examples and, and apply that. And I can you can also see Srinivas is a Spurs fan. Uh, I'm, I'm a I grew up in Cleveland. I'm a Cavs fan, so we were just just joking. Our our teams could be uh, could be meeting in the finals a month from now. We may not be speaking to each other. So glad glad we're getting this out of the the way now. So um, so with that, Srinivas, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. Thanks, Dick. Hello everyone. Um, and yeah, as as Greg mentioned, my name is Srinivas Salgudi, and and I joined Finet um, uh, Finet a year ago. Before that, I spent uh, last ten years with Oracle Consulting, uh, working on various planning projects. And as part of my tenure at Oracle, um, I also worked on three full cycle HPCM implementations, and I was lucky enough to be part of the first HPCM implementation. And we work very closely with the product development because as it was the, one of the first releases, we had a lot of issues, so we closely worked with product development on, on a daily basis to help them uh, understand what the issues that we are seeing on the customer side, and they're giving us, working closely with us, providing us with the patches and, and guiding us along the way of the implementation. Yep, so having said our, let's go into the presentation. So. Uh, today's agenda, right? So we're going to talk about profitability so, uh, to understand a um, more functional side. What is profitability, right? How how is it, how is profitability uh, uh, helps helps? Uh, what what are the questions that have been asked for profitability, and how HPCM tries to answer some of the questions or needs of profitability questions? Uh, then we're going to look at the the Oracle's HPCM architecture. Uh, the focus of today's presentation would be on the standard model, uh, but there are other models like detailed profitability and management ledger. But we, we, if if required, we can do uh, those two sessions later on. But the focus would be on on the on the standard model, which came out with the 11.11 release. Uh, we're going to look at the, the different model components. What 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 makes a standard profitability model? Uh, we're going to do a quick demo. Uh, we're going to look into the uh, profitability model to get a feel of of what we talked in the previous slides. Uh, look at how it looks, uh, how how it is set up, and and then what end users can look at, what can they can do inside the model and outside the model. And we can briefly talk about some of the key features of HPCM. I mean, how it differentiates with some of the other things, uh, some of the other models that have been built until today, um, and how HPCM actually differs with some of the models and some of the key features, we'll try to understand some of them. And then if time permits, we'll do Q&A, or as Greg suggested, uh, please feel uh, free to send your questions, and then we promise to get back to you uh, as time permits. Um, uh, we, we will definitely get back to you uh, uh, with a response onto your questions. Or, or we can set up a call and discuss with you some of your questions later on. Okay. So, Let's get to what, what, what some of the profitability questions, right? So, so what 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 actually is is a profitability, right? So we haven't we have seen many in in, in many cases as a as a client at a client basis where the LOB managers uh, do their profitability analysis and when they go to the uh, to the management for the reporting, they they always they always come back with 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 responses saying that hey, they want to increase in want to see the company more profitable, uh, and the only thing that that they, that we always think uh, how to make profitable is by reducing the cost. But in the research has shown that nine out of the ten cost um, in, in test cases, cost reduction programs fail to fail to achieve the targets that have been set. I mean, reducing the cost is not is not going to make your company more profitable. Uh, but we need to understand more about okay if it, if it's a manufacturing or 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 an, on service-based company, we need to understand, okay, what defines profitability of a customer or what do, what defines a profitability of a product? Uh, we need to go a level deeper to understand 
why why I'm, I'm why all my cost reduction measures are not are not impacting my pro profitability targets. Um, so we, so uh, until now the cost drivers are uh, uh, until the cost drivers are not clearly understand. Uh, and, and because we don't understand the cost drivers uh, clearly, we, as a result of cost, cost cutting initiatives are not targeted at, a, at the right places. So profitability, uh, so in, in an oral, so focus, uh, focus should, should not only be on a cost but also should be on revenue because cutting the cost may, may, may not be the right thing but also we need to focus on how to ramp up some of the high profitable products or services uh, which could, which could which could ultimately impact your your bottom line, right? So, profitability management is not just simple cost cutting. Or organizations need to understand to be able to understand the profitability of each project, or if it's a service service offering, like um, like how much it takes to cost to serve, how many resources are consumed, what channels and regions are adding values. Uh, so, and 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 in addition to in addition to that, we also need to consider if there is any future prospects as well not only to the to the current state but we also need to analyze okay what are the future prospects as well before we make any 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 decisions to make sure that we are we are cutting at at, at the right place right so so currently how company how how companies are trying to tank, tank, tackle some of this this profitability questions right many companies try to tackle profitability management questions with some kind of combination of excel or manual manual based processes or some custom built bi solution on top of sbase and we all all know i mean at least most of us know what's S, what an sbase it's a great multidimensional engine which provides all your bi analytical capabilities so the clients usually build a custom uh, build SP solution and on top of it put in some BI reporting needs to tackle some of these things. But but the real issue is it's not around a solution that's been built but there's, there, there's typically a lack of process on integration so you build an, an solution but on top of it you have BI reporting but what, what is the process behind it? I mean it doesn't give you a flexibility to do different kind of analytics for prop, that are needed for pro profitability so so application is built in solving um, to solve the solution, but you can end up some of uh, disconnected data. There's not there's not correct um, integration the data that's that's providing the, this BI solution. So at the end of it, having all this di disconnected data that th then the client will have little confidence in in the information that is getting out of the system, and to act upon it. So having said that, so. The Oracle Hyperion came up. Okay, Oracle came out with, with the product called HPCM, which is a, which is a uh, profitability module, which is geared towards addressing some of the clients' need or uh, on uh, uh, client needs to allow them to make a business decisions for uh, for the profitability uh, questions. So what what Hyperion um, Hyperion HPCM is right? It's a user-driven performance management application. What that means, it's it's because it gives the ability for the end users to drive his own profitability, um, profitability analysis and calculations. It it measures, allocates, and and assigns costs and revenues. As I said before, it is very important when when you when when you are looking at profitability, it's not only about cost cutting, but we have to have a combination of your costs and your revenue allocation to come up to 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 analyze. Where we are spending and where is our revenue coming up? To 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 both 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 of these two things go in hand in hand in determining in determining where we can be more profitable. So HPCM allows you to compute profitability not at the, the top level at, at the GL level, but it allows a businesses to perform the profitability and analysis at more granular level, like at the business segments or the customers or the product level. If, if you're manufacturing, it's, it's very important for your business managers at, at the lower level to analyze the productivity at their, uh, at, at a SKU level. Uh, and if you're, if you're in a finance or, or a banking industry, you need to understand the, the, the customer profitability because the, so when you look at the information, it's not only just just the direct costs that we need to analyze. There could be some indirect costs also involved in here. So getting all the different <clears throat> different metrics in in different metrics of data available for you to analyze the to analyze the information gives you more in um, more insight into where you can make some certain changes to make it to make the business more profitable 
also looking at pro it, it provides you scenario modeling for decision making as we have seen in many of your many of our uh, planning and budgeting solutions right the most important thing that we want to look at is variance comparisons to look at what what is actual versus budget and what if if I make some changes or to the drivers how how would my budget look like am I meeting the targets or not so HPCM also provides the same capability scenario modeling like you could do your profitability analysis work on, on your actual data and also your budget data and do a comparative analysis on how you're tracking uh, and also do a, do a forecasting or budgeting across next year to see how 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 some of the changes that you you intend to make affects the total overall top line the profitability numbers and this HPCM module is tightly integrated into an EPM technology stack as I'm going to show you in a brief while uh, in, a, in, a, in a minute it's tightly integrated with <coughs> shared services EPMA um, as space as your reporting engine and you can use uh, of various kind of BI reporting tools like OBIE, FR or web analysis or smart view.